heavy. Bored. But yeah, I already asked this about love poems. We agree they are. These are basically love poems, and they're kind of like emo love poems. But I want to talk about Little Beast because I think not only does this like the best, my favorite poem in the collection, I think this might be the best poem if I had to, like if somebody held a gun to my head and said, what's the best poem in this collection? I would say Little Beast. But what do you think? It's difficult to say because I have such a long standing affinity for Litany that like, I think that one's my favorite and it's so good. But like, there are so many in here that are so good. Little Beast is so good. I also love the last one, Snow and Dirty Rain. It's really hard to tell, but no, I love Little Beast and I, in my notes on it, on the side, I have like exclamation marks next to stanzas. So yeah, let's uh, talk about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is a little bit long, so we don't have to read the whole thing, this, listeners. It's like cut into uh, seven sections here. And he does this throughout the book with a couple of poems, cutting them into sections. But we'll just start like, I'll read the first section and then, you know, we'll go through and, and you know, feel free, Cassandra, to read whatever you want or uh, point out if I didn't mark a poem or something, you know. I said no fucking rules. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Little Beast, one. An all night barbecue. A dance on the courthouse lawn. The radio aches a little tune that tells the story of what the night is thinking. It's thinking of love. It's thinking of stabbing us to death and leaving our bodies in a dumpster. That's a nice touch. Stains in the night. Whiskey and kisses for everyone. Tonight, by the freeway, a man eating fruit pie with a buck knife carves the likeness of his lover's face into the motel wall. I like him, and I want to be like him. My hand's no longer an afterthought. And that's just the first stanza, listeners. Like, it gets better and better with each stanza as it goes on. But just the images, like Cassandra was already saying, my favorite part of this, man eating fruit pie with a buck knife carves the likeness of his lover's face into the motel wall. It's almost horror movie, right? Like, it's almost horror movie emo, kind of like... Right, yeah, body horror, the specificity. And throughout the entire collection, you get all of this, like, very specific focus on body parts, especially hands. He talks about hands a lot. He talks about fruit a lot. He talks about, like, apples. Like, I don't know. And, like, you know, you can kind of think of, like, the goriness of, like, the fruit that's inside a pie. I feel like all of this is super relevant to that sort of undercurrent of horror that runs through the whole thing. And there's, like, a, I want to say crust punk kind of like thing to this right where it's like uh uh living in motels fucking people in motels like kind of doing drugs and living on the street and uh not giving a fuck right like uh drinking yourself to sleep or whatever yeah this very self-destructive energy definitely courses yes. through all and I get, I guess that's like teenage, right? Like, like self-destruction. And it's like, I guess it's like a, it's like a young person's game. I mean, not always, right? <laughs> like, but sometimes self-destruction, if you're still doing that when you're older, like it usually leads to destruction, <laughs> like a final destruction. Whereas when you're young, yeah, you romanticize it. And I feel like, I don't know. I mean, even for me, like, you know, people like Sexton and Plath who, you know, romanticize death, write about death. And of course, both killed themselves. Like, those were the writers that I romanticized when I was a teenager. Like, as a teenager, you are so consumed by your own sadness and your histrionics, and, like, you're drawn to themes like this, you know? Absolutely. And that's why I couldn't These get the emo. These writers transcend it because their writing is so good, whereas, like, maybe, like, a shitty emo band doesn't transcend it, right. but you're drawn to it for the same reasons. Yeah, and like we talked about in the beginning of this, like how we got into poetry. I mean, music was a huge part of it for me, like kind of especially the kind of even if they're shitty emo poems or emo lyrics, like it, it kind of whets your appetite for more. So like when people get into this through music or through fiction or through any other type of art form, like it does kind of whet your appetite, even if it's not what we consider, you know, the greatest ever or like high quality writing or something. I don't know. I mean, I, and you already said this, if your, your favorite is litany and like the way certain things are crossed litany, which certain things are crossed out, like that's in the first section of this book. The first section is how many... resources, American resources. such a lack Heavy. of gratitude for life forward. I, I aspire to boredom, Heavy. I should say. Bored. Heavy. I am heavy, heavy, heavy. Bored. 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 Heavy.
as you the night sweats and the day sweats, pal, pal, I do. 